this is my porch little area. I made this, okay, let's do the story. I bought a safe, you guys. It's um, like a real safe. Uh, well, I wanted one for fireproof for like my um, documents and everything. And maybe put like a few of my special pens in there. And then I was looking online and I was like, well, dang, the fireproof, you know, nice ones were only a few hundred dollars cheaper than if you get like a burglar proof one. And then I was thinking, well, it's kind of silly to get a safe if you're not going to get a burglar proof one, right? So I just got a really nice, like real safe. And it came on this palette here. And when I got the palette, I was like, oh man, I loved it almost as much as the safe. Um, and so I got a waterproofer and I like spent a few days waterproofing it. It was already moldy and I tried to clean it, um, some of the mold and dry it first. I probably didn't do the best of jobs, but it's a cool, nice palette and I use it to put my plants on. I wanted to show you my plants. I love them. Today I'm going to be fertilizing them because my Christmas cactus is starting to bloom and I've been very, very mean plant mother and I haven't really given it enough fertilizer. Um, so I'm going to do that today, start giving it a little bit more of the fur to make it so beautiful. I can't wait to show you guys. It's going to have like a trillion blooms. This is my oldest plant. I bought it down here. It's really huge. Look at that. And I bought two other colors recently, last year. I was going to replant them in with my original one. Those are different colors. This is like a hot pink color. Then there's a white and then like a more like a reddish or orange. Uh, the Christmas cactus I got when we moved down here. So I've probably had it for like 13 years or something, a long time. And um, my dad took care of it for quite a few years when I just was lazy at a point of, you gotta get like that ever? Like you take care of your plants. It's like taking care of kids. You gotta water it and feed it and you know, get rid of the pests and stuff. And it really becomes year after year like a chore. And one year I just got tired of it and I just didn't water my poor little cactus and it was dying. And my dad was like, well, screw that, you know, he took it home and he took care of it for quite a few years. So it's been in our family. <laughs> this is my Christmas cactus. Then we got this. Ooh, look at my house. It's, um, I use neem. Let me show you. I'm going to grab it. Hey, Kita. This is neem oil. I ordered it on, um, Amazon. I use it to try to kill off some of the bugs and stuff that I accidentally brought onto my porch, which is bad. And some of my bushes out in the yard have these little white, like, beetle bugs on them that are, like, eating the bushes. So, I'm, when I sprayed the neem here, I guess since it's, like, a thick oil, it got all over the wall and then got moldy. So, I'm going to get the pressure washer out and pressure wash the porch because, you know, it gets, um, you know, like, moldy and stuff. So, I need to pressure wash all this crap. Or just probably replace this old bucket. It's probably all dried out. But this plant is a... Gosh, I forget what it's called. They just had one bloom recently. It's like a corpse flower. Or they call it something like that. Because when they bloom, these little red flowers, um, they smell like dead things. Like a dead body or a dead animal. And it's called like something like a carcass or corpse. It's like a succulent like you know in the cactus family it's like a really soft watery plant and these spikes aren't like the kind that hurts you they're just like faux fake spikes but I got this at a little flea market thing the lady just sold like one or two of these little branch things here because they just come right off and they propagate so dang easy oh my gosh I had no idea so she just was selling like maybe two of these little branches in a pot and I bought like two pots or something you know for a few bucks right and I was like, oh, this is so cool because it's like Medusa. These little things will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. I've obviously not taken the best of care of that this last year when I was depressed and everything. It still survived though. But I brought in a little weed from outside. Didn't even think about it. And I brought in these little mealy bugs. Oh, I hate them. They're so hard to get rid of. You see those? Those are, you can tell by their bright color. I just sprayed recently a few times with this neem and stuff. I need to look for a different um something but i brought those in these i just kept um when the branches fell off i would just repot them and repot them and repot them and oh my gosh like i said they just propagate like crazy but they're really a gorgeous plant look how long those 
trains go. I mean, they go for like feet and feet and feet. Kita likes them. This is Kita. She's a little stray cat that we rescued. It was in the neighborhood for quite a few years, like at least two years I saw her around. She's always like in the driveway when I went walking, I'd see like her laying around and dogs would be like chasing her and stuff. She was really sick. Um, I've had her for like two years now at least. So like maybe three years ago that winter, she had no fur. She had, was like totally furless almost. She was just bones and I thought she was diseased, you know, so I didn't really have much to do with her because I didn't want to get my cats any kind of disease or anything. But then we felt so bad for her that she actually lived through that winter. I don't know how, but we saw her in the spring and she was so pitiful. And I could tell my dad, he was trying not to look at her and like her and feel bad for her, but I could tell because he loves black cats. You know, his ash is a black cat. I could tell he liked her, so I took her to the vet for him. I had like no money back then at all, but I did. I paid, it was like, you know, however many hundreds of dollars for tests and everything. They do the cancer and the AIDS test. And she actually didn't have anything wrong with her. She was perfectly healthy other than malnourished, which is why they said she was losing her fur and everything. So we brought her home and adopted her. Sorry, my big butt hit that. We adopted her and uh, now she loves it here. <laughs> oh my gosh, she puts Ash in his place. The only thing to put Ash in his place is her. Okay, so those are my weird cactus. That's my Christmas cactus. This one is a, my newest plant and it's special. It is a, can, do you guys know what that looks like? Can you tell by the vines? It's a sweet potato. And let me tell you the story of my sweet potato real quick. So, uh, like right before my dad got sick, like right when he got sick, I went grocery shopping and I just made a lot of my batch foods like I put in the freezer and everything, the chili and all that. And um, one of the things I had gotten was a purple sweet potato because my dad loves sweet potatoes and I don't think he ever had a purple one and I was excited about him trying it. It was organic, beautiful colored purple sweet potato. But he, at that point he had gotten sick and wasn't eating and so the sweet potato sat on the counter and you know they can sit there for quite a while before they start to you know like root out or whatever or do those eyes or whatever they do. But it was the night that my dad passed away that I got home from the hospice house and I was standing there in the kitchen you know just like um in shock you know and I looked down and on the counter was that purple sweet potato and it had grown this beautiful little not just like a, a you know but it actual you know it grew the little stem with the tiny little bright purple leaf on it and it was so gorgeous and I knew that my dad would have loved it because he loves plants like I do and I just, uh, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go like put this in soil right now and honor my dad. And so I did, I was like, I went to the room and I got some soil and I dug out some kind of pot and I just stuck it in there and I watered it and I grew this purple sweet potato and honor my dad, you know, on the night that he died and it has grown like crazy. I was just thinking of um, just using it for the ornamental viney part but it got too big for the little pot I had it in. It was just like coming out of the pot and all weird and everything. And I didn't even think about it. I know it's super probably. But when I went out there and repotted it, oh my gosh, there was little baby sweet potatoes all in it. There was like at least three of them or four of them. And they were like freaking fuchsia, like bright pink. And they were pretty large. And I was like, it just felt so cool to grow my own little sweet potatoes. So I took it out like two or three of them and put them in that pot just because I just couldn't dump the cute little sweet potatoes. So that's my special sweet potato for my dad. So on my to-do list now that it's not so hot, actually this has been on my to-do list for a year or more, is to cut these hedges. They're supposed to be a lot lower. Uh, I think they get more like sparse here the more you let them grow up tall. I would like them to be more like that height, but I just had let them go for like too long. So I have like a big cutter thing that my dad bought, like one of those electric ones. I just gotta like use it, I guess. I split up my sweet potato and those little cactus things and I just put it out here to see what it would do out like on the sidewalk and it actually is doing pretty well. Here's some more of them that I put outside to see how they would as do an experiment. And I'd literally just put a few little pieces here in each clump, you know, like maybe three or four little parts. And that's what they've uh, propagated to over the last maybe two years, year and a half. So they do pretty well outside. They don't do bad. Uh, well, this is Florida. Remember that. This one I bought at Lowe's. It's an elephant 
cactus or elephant plant is what they call it because I guess what the baby elephants eat like in Africa but I love it it did so well this summer it is in desperate need of a repotting so I guess I can do that I don't guess it hurts to do it now in the winterish time huh I also bought this plant at Lowe's which is really pretty I just put it in a Lowe's bucket and drilled some holes in it I was finally able to cut my palm trees. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. The last time I tried, which was like a month ago or two, no, like two or three months ago, um, it was, oh, it was torture. Okay, let me just put it that way. It took like 10 or 15 minutes to get one branch down. Cause when the bottom layers, I don't know if you guys know about the palm trees, when these bottom ones die, they sag and they're so tall and long and they, just, they look awful and they drag on the, they drag on the roof and they hurt the shingle and stuff and so I had to cut it but I hurt my arm my elbow I banged it and it felt like I broke a bone or something for like the last month I could hardly use it well so this guy stopped by he's like hey I could trim your bushes <laughs> yeah I trim my bushes I could trim your palms for $75 and I was like no thank you <laughs> no thanks I can do it myself so I was trying to like I was just not wanting to do it. Let me put it that way. I was like, okay, let's torture myself. So I looked at the blade because it was like this big pole cutter, you know, tall thing with like a saw at the end of it that reaches up way up there because these are tall palm trees. And uh, I looked at the blade and I was like, that blade is so old and rusted. It probably is the problem. So I went on Amazon, bought a new blade for 15 bucks and oh my God, it cut like butter. Yesterday I did all these, like it was like six or seven of them in like 10 minutes. It was awesome. So that's done. I need to pressure wash out here. It gets so green on the porch here. But look at that little hole. Do you see it? In the post? In the like the pillar of the carport that's like a snake hole every year you'll see a little baby's snakes head sticking out of there and resting they don't I don't think they're bad snakes they don't I looked up the color they look like they're just like garden or snakes or something you know but I thought that was adorable I woke up today and I didn't brush my hair I didn't brush my teeth yet and last night I was just got nervous and I start sometimes picking do you ever like feel for little bumps and start picking and scratching them and then making yourself look you know, like, and starting, you know, but that's my day so far. I'm, I'm out working outdoors and I just don't care. I think these glasses are not the most attractive. They look kind of like men glasses, right? Like sunglasses, you know? So I'm like, it probably wasn't a good choice if I was wanting to actually look good or care about like how I looked, but I don't. So, you know, they're wonderful though for seeing, but look at them. They're just like 70s, like sunglass looking, you know? So the last thing I've been working on in the yard, which I need to continue doing, is I don't know a lot about weeds and Florida weeds, but my dad, he decided to say fuck it and let the grass die because it takes so much watering and money to keep up the grass. And so, um, and there's so much of that crabgrass stuff that just goes around, you know, I guess like that long kind of like, I guess it's called crabgrass, I don't know. But now, uh, there was some nice little like ground covering weeds starting to take over, which were pretty. But then I noticed these, and I was like, what are these? And I don't know if they're bad, but my feelings say they're bad weeds because they're taken over. It's not been long at all. Like only a month or so since I noticed them. And look how many. There are like tons of them. They have a really unusual smell, like almost like an herb, you know, like oregano or something. And, um... They're just, they go everywhere like crazy. And so I've just been getting a shovel and getting like time digging out the whole earth around it and making sure I get all the roots, trying to get rid of them. But it's taking forever because they're just everywhere. What I do like are, I don't know what these are, these little, they're kind of like cactus, like a succulent. I like this and it's starting to go around the ground. There's a lot of little ground weeds, but this one I'm trying to get rid of and it's all over. Hey Ash. Kitty. So one thing I added to the door was a cat door. It was kind of hard. I had to buy a jigsaw and I had to cut the hole and everything. But Ash loves it. See, my dad used to let him out, you know, just like here and there and then let him back in. 
and he gets so scared if he hears like a UPS truck or something he'll just like get freaked out and he'd start hiding and so this way he can go in and out whenever he wants to and he loves his cat door well time to go thanks for watching say bye